Okay. Hey guys, a um, little Cold War action here. Just take a look at this image, these images, right? The, the dueling images. And, and one of the things that I wanted to get across as you're looking at your reading notes and some of the, what I'm going to ask you to do is to take notes on the other side here today, tonight. But one of the things I asked you to do in your reading notes was to look at some of the goals that the Soviet Union had for after the war and some of the goals that the United States had for after the war. And what I really was hoping that you get out of that is that, you know, they're, they're, they're conflicting goals. And these two drawings, I think, depict the way that each side was seeing the other. The bear represents the Soviet Union, and obviously Uncle Sam represents the United States. And it's all about perspective. The Cold War is all about perspective. And that's one of the things that I want us to, to use the, the Kennan reading to do here tonight. The, the perspective from the Soviet Union is that, you know, the United States is an aggressor and the United States is looking to limit and destroy the Soviet Union's way of life by focusing on, you know, an anti-communist stance. Whereas the United States views communism as the real threat to the world. They, you know, they make some comparisons to what Hitler had done to what Stalin was doing in Eastern Europe after World War II. And so this, this, these images, I think, are really great for me at emphasizing a lot of the things that you probably wrote down in the top two columns of your reading notes for tonight. My, my goal for this video is that by the end of the video you can identify the logic behind early American policy regarding communism and the Soviet Union. And um, this is probably a good place to say this. Um, when I say communism and the Soviet Union, you know, you could think of communism as one thing because there are going to be communist countries other than the Soviet Union and then the Soviet Union is something else. But I'm telling you that for most of the Cold War, we have a very difficult time separating it. We think that any, any movement of communism is being led by and centered in the Soviet Union, even though that's not always right. And so what I want to do right now is, I'm going to, and I'm going to ask you to pause the video here a couple of times, but what I want to do right now is I want you to Take out the Kennan reading, and I want you to focus on a couple of specific parts of the Kennan reading. And so, you know, you have the Kennan reading out, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do on the right-hand side of your notes: is I want you to choose just one of the sections, okay, one, two, three, or four, and hopefully we'll end up with some with a with a nice split among people that chose one, two, three, or four. And what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. And I want you to just read that one section. And if you read it in class today, great. Go back over just one of the sections. And I want you to then just take some notes on the highlights. And here is the, the directive that I want you to take with the highlights. And that is, how do you see Kennan revealing how we should understand the Soviet Union or what he knows already about the Soviet Union and how maybe that should guide the decisions that the United States will make regarding its policy towards this country that it's now viewing as public enemy number one after you know Hitler is gone and Nazi Germany is gone and the, and the Japanese have been defeated. This now becomes public enemy number one to democracy and to the United States. So take a minute here, pause the video, and just jot down some notes on one of the four sections you choose. Okay, hopefully you paused and that okay makes sense because you're starting it again. If you just let it play through, then that okay, it probably seemed forced and fake, which it felt as I did it. The The next thing that I want to talk about and that I want you to, to think and about Eastern Europe. is what? The, the speech that you have in your textbook. Oh, see this Berlin, here. Prague, Vienna, Budapest, Belgrade, Bucharest, and Sofia. All these famous cities and the populations around them lie in what I must call the Soviet sphere. Winston Churchill gives this famous speech it's called the Iron Curtain speech in 1946. And the question that I have here at the top of this slide is why does, a, why does the post-war devastation of Europe matter to the United States? And this is where what you just wrote down about Kennan might differ with what our policy is actually going to become. Because what Kennan is focused on is how does the United States match up with the Soviet Union? How big of a threat is the Soviet Union? What becomes a stark reality, and I think that the Iron, 
the Iron uh, Curtain speech kind of reveals is that the rest of Europe is war-torn. So if I flip to this map right here, right, the red line that I've drawn on here represents the, the, you know, the Iron Curtain. Behind this line is the Soviet sphere of influence. But what we have to be aware of is that over here, right, in Western Europe, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that for you. Over here in Western Europe, you know, we have our allies. And, and those allies are countries that now are hurting because the, the, the war has devastated their, their landscape, the war has devastated their economy. And we have a ser the United States has a serious question that they have to answer. And that question, you know, is what do we do to these countries or for these countries? Because if we don't do something for them, maybe the communists will. And if the communists do, does that give them a, an inroad to some of these countries? And our worst fear would be, of course, that this part of the world, which we have just saved to make safe for democracy from the Nazis, now could become susceptible to communist expansion. For the United States, that can't happen. Right? That, that is not something that we can allow to be possible. So the first, the first flare-up, right, the first flare-up in the Cold War actually happens down here in Greece and Turkey. Oh, that didn't, that wasn't the shape I wanted it to be. Let's see if this works. There we go. Happens down here in Greece and Turkey. And our response, right, our response was, it, which is now known as the Truman Doctrine, was to take cash, money, and, and aid, and food, and whatever resources the people needed the most in those countries and get it to them. So for example, in Greece and Turkey in 1946, early 1947, the United States responds to an, a, an encroaching communist threat by giving them $400 million in aid. We expand this, right? We expand this when we start to, when the United States starts to assess all of Europe. And these images, I can show them to you in, um, in class on Wednesday at the beginning, but they are just, all of them just show before and after what, what, the, what the European landscape looked like before and after the war. And we have all these downtrodden people. We have people that are out of homes, out of jobs, no economy to speak of, no food, and they need help. And one fear that the Americans have is that if Western Europe falls susceptible to the Soviets, that we could be dealing with an entirely communist Europe. And if that was the case, and, and Moscow was the center of this global empire based on communism, now we're outnumbered again. And so we decided, and the Truman Doctrine was the first step in this, but then the second step was, it's called the Marshall Plan, we decided that it was imperative for our safety and our security to get involved in Europe and to get that, those countries that were our allies propped up so that they could be su successful. We invest $13 billion, and I know that you guys know the difference between a million and a billion because we talked about it when we were talking about the Depression. That's a significant amount of money, and we invest $13 billion to try to prop up Western Europe so that they would not be susceptible to communists. What I would like you to do in, in summary of tonight's uh, video lesson as you review what you read, as you review some of the things that I've highlighted, and when you look at what um, Kennan was suggesting was that we just needed to really just contain communism. We needed to keep it where it already existed. And so our policy should be to, to, to make decisions to try to keep communism from spreading, right? Kennan, if, um, if you read in section uh, three, he talks a little bit about communism almost being like a disease that, that infects the you know, susceptible nations, and he wanted to contain that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like you to put all of this together, and you could, you could shut off the video and do this, but in that bottom section, I'd like you to, here's the puzzle I'm giving you, Iron Curtain, Truman Doctrine, Containment, and Marshall Plan. And what I'd like you to do, and we'll probably get back to this in class a little bit at the beginning on Wednesday, <clears throat> excuse me. I'd like you to write a one-sentence summary using those four terms to summarize these ideas as to what is it 
that U.S. leaders are putting in place, right? Their 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 post lesson. I'm sorry, post World War II lesson for the for the United States government on how to contend with communism using Iron Curtain, Truman Doctrine, Containment, and Marshall Plan. I will see you guys in class tomorrow in the library. Don't forget that right over there. I hope I'm pointing the right way. You should have a Google form that is going to provide me some feedback on how you understood some things and also that you watched your video. Have a good night.